in the last episode, a couple of keen-eyed viewers noticed this and wanted a bit more detail on what it actually does. So in this video, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover what this is as well as what problems it solves. First up, I should probably mention this clamp sucks. I don't want to mention that, but it does feel like that's sort of the obligatory joke that I must make about a vacuum-powered clamp. That's out of the way. So what is this? This is the VC4 by that clamp. They have one other model, the VC5. I'll get to that a little bit later, but the four is what I went for. It goes for about 80 Australian dollars, and I purchased this from, I want to say Beyond Tools in WA. I'll have a link to wherever I bought it. It is not supplied to me by anyone. This is what I've purchased. I also added this switch. Really satisfying switch. It makes things a little bit easier. But otherwise, it's it's pretty much a stock standard thing. So, what is it? As the company name might imply, the VC4 by Vac Clamp is a Vac Clamp. The vacuum comes in through there. And we've got this nice little grid where we can put different sized gaskets. It comes with three sizes. So this is the large. And when you have the full surface uh, applying pressure, it applies about 150 kilos worth of pressure. Get in there. Plus 150 kilos worth of pressure, which is quite a lot for holding something down. It's more than what I weigh, so it, it's a good alternative to actually holding something down. The other sizes, uh, there's one that is a group of six and the other one is a group of three. You just have to make sure this hole here is included in your group as that's where the vacuum is actually pulled through. And this is all powered by an air compressor, so it does come with this hose, which I'm not using at the moment which is whatever hose diameter that the clamp uses. On the other end, it has a, I guess, a BSP fitting, quick connect fitting that you can then apply, you can attach a, like a Nitto quick connect fitting like so. Uh, and then you can plug directly into the air compressor like that. I opted to go for the switch because it makes it a lot easier. I can switch the whole thing on and off uh, for when I'm swapping between workpieces or pieces that have been clamped. It has that same BSP thread on one side and the flex hose, I don't know, six mil tube or whatever it is that goes to the clamp itself. So that's what this is, but let's talk about what problems it solves. But I think probably the best way to do that is to just demonstrate it. So what problem does this solve? Well, it's a clamp, it's a vice. It solves work holding, particularly of awkward sized pieces. If you've got a nice big chunky piece, put it in a vice, no problem. You can get to all the edges. Your sander or router or whatever is not gonna hit the clamps, that's great. But get to a thin panel like this, a small panel like this, and clamping, while it is possible, it is frustrating to do in a vice, regular vice, because you've got to be very careful not to apply too much pressure so it doesn't pop out of the vise or so it doesn't flex the material too much. This makes this very simple because I can flick the switch on and off, get to the other side, or if I've got a dozen of these to do, it's no real hassle. Whereas with this, the couple of minutes it takes to align everything perfectly really starts to add up considering how long it takes to actually work on the workpiece. Other options would include that non-slip router mat or a blanket. Um, like a moving blanket, furniture blanket type thing, which will dampen a lot of the vibration so it doesn't get away from you, but they don't always work, particularly with small light pieces, they still tend to dance around. Doing the same in a tail vise will often result in the piece being fine for a while and then starting to vibrate away. So this is really just another tool in the arsenal for, for me, primarily sanding, but you can obviously do routing very safely because there's significant downwards pressure and nothing is in the way. If you cut through it, routing, like cut through the middle, you're gonna have issues then, but for edge treatment or non-through cuts, this is gonna be pretty great. In industry, uh, Virutex, Virutex, I'm not sure how it's said, have a, a jig that 
uses one of these exact unit, I guess that clamp makes it for them, that is on a tilting, swiveling platform. So you can attach a large panel, particularly melamine panels for cabinetry, and then do edge treatments such as either applying or flush trimming edge banding. Eventually I'll probably make one of those jigs for this because that'd be really handy to have at times where you've got an awkward size piece but you still can't really get it in a vise or other traditional woodworking work holding just gets in the way, vise handles, that sort of thing. It's definitely not a must have but it's a pretty nice have that didn't cost too much. I would recommend getting the switch if they had a foot pedal, that'd be even better, but the switch works just fine. And to me, it makes the most sense because otherwise it's really annoying to try and, I guess, check the hose to get the workpiece out. Uh, and the switch wasn't a huge cost increase. And it just adds a lot of versatility. Hopefully that answers your questions on what this weird thing was in Paul's video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>